I'm Dr. Chris, and I want to answer some very important questions that you may have about herniated discs. So you're presenting with a bulging or herniated or slipped disc. It may actually surprise you that this is one of the better spine conditions to have. The reason why is because the soft tissue between the bones typically heals and can often reabsorb back to where it came from. Let's start with the anatomy. So what is a disc? Well, the lumbar spine has five bones. That's your low back. In between these five bones, you have soft tissue. The soft tissue is the disc. Now the disc is made up of two parts. First, you have the annulus, which is just the ring of ligaments surrounding the second part, which is the gel-like nucleus. Now the two functions of the disc is first, it allows shock absorption between the bones. And second, it allows movement so we can move. Now the outside of the annulus, which is again, that ring of ligaments is innervated, meaning it has a nerve supply. So just like if you were to sprain your ankle and get pain because you've strained those ligaments, you can have the same effect in the low back. If you pull on those ligaments hard enough or you're putting stress on them long enough, there will be irritation. And that is from the soft tissue between the bones. So what about the different types of nucleus or disc herniations? Well, there's really three types of herniations. The first one is bulging. The second one is an extrusion. And then the third one is a sequestration. So let's go over these three in a little bit more detail. The name is really describing what's happening to the gel-like center. So if the gel-like center is pushing out on the annulus, which is that ring of ligaments, you can get a distension of the disc abnormally on one side, and that's a bulging disc. Now an extrusion is referring to what happens if that gel-like center actually breaches the annulus and it goes into the spinal canal. So an extrusion is really the gel-like center breaking past that ring of ligaments. Now a sequestration or a sequestered disc refers to an isolated piece of that gel-like middle being dislodged so it's detached from the middle and now it's kind of floating in that spinal canal. The bulging disc is sometimes referred to as a protrusion. And then of course you have your extrusion and then your sequestration. Those are the three types of herniations. The first one is, the first two are really contained, the bulging extrusion, and the sequestration is non-contained. It's not contained anymore in that gel-like center. A piece has broken off. Another way that disc herniations can be measured is by size. So if you have an MRI, it may, it may describe the disc as having an excursion. A five millimeter or less excursion is a small herniation. Five millimeters to 10 millimeters is a moderate and greater than 10 millimeters is a larger disc herniation. There are a few key findings with these disc herniations. It may surprise you that the bigger ones actually can do just as well, if not better than the smaller ones. So regarding an extrusion and a sequestration, the extrusion, yes, it can reabsorb back to the center in between the bones so that your symptoms and mechanics can start to go away. You can heal. A sequestered disc where that gel-like center has broken off and is in the spinal canal can also heal, but it looks different. There are macrophages, which are highly specialized cells that will go through that area and actually eat away at cellular debris. That's right. The body can feel like, hey, there's something in the spinal canal, it's not attached, and we're gonna chomp away at this just like a Pac-Man would and get rid of that. Again, so that your body can heal and then you can have restored mechanics. Now, sometimes these sequestered discs do not heal. And in that state, you may need a surgery to actually remove that from the spinal canal. The greatest 
reabsorption occurs in the first eight weeks after injury. The body doesn't sit by idly and wait for things to happen. It starts to heal. And there's where you're gonna feel the greatest amount of healing is in those first eight weeks. That doesn't mean that after that, there's more healing to be had. There is, but in that first eight weeks, you have the greatest reabsorption. Why did this happen? This is a loaded question, and I get this question all the time. And a lot of people tend to hypothesize, hey, you know, my mom or dad had a bad back, and maybe that's why I got a bad back. I don't really like this answer or this thought because it's, your parents didn't give you a herniated disc. It's more likely that you were actually copying their movements for a long time and your back got all bent out of shape, but they didn't pass on a herniated disc. Back and neck pain are typically caused by two different types of stresses. First, you have cumulative stress, and second, you have traumatic stress. So put very simply, a cumulative stress is a load on your tissue for, that is too much for too long. And a traumatic stress is a load on the tissue that is too much too fast. So an easy example is for a cumulative stress is being in a bent posture or a strained posture or hanging on your ligaments too much for too long. And a traumatic stress is again, that too much stress too fast. So that's more of your high impact activity, maybe a car accident, maybe a fall, or maybe you did something that your body wasn't used to. Like maybe, I don't know, maybe you're moving your friend out of his apartment or bending over and picking up something heavy when you weren't used to it. So we really have cumulative stresses and traumatic stresses. Both traumatic and cumulative stresses can unbalance the load on the disc. Now the disc, if it's nice and healthy, should have an equal and balanced load so the ring of ligaments can contain that gel-like center. If you have cumulative or traumatic stress on the outside of the ligaments, you can get what's called fissures or cracks or small tears in that annular ligament. If that happens, it's a little harder for the gel-like substance to be contained in the middle. Now, depending on where that fissure or that crack is in the disc, that gel-like material can move away from the center. And if it does it enough, it can enter the spinal canal. This is typically how these herniations will occur. What does it feel like? Or how do I know if I'm having a maybe a herniated disc or a strained low back ligament or disc? Well, the presentation really varies. You can have central low back pain across the middle of your low back, or you can have low back pain on one side of your spine, or you can have pain that goes into the buttock or down the leg. These presentations vary and you can have a variety of different pains, stiffnesses, or weakness. I find that many people will attribute their pain due to a tight muscle or a weak muscle. That's actually not likely. It's more likely that because there's been strained disc between the bones, that the muscles are just responding. Highly recommend a movement exam to figure out what is the deficit. A phenomenon that occurs with low back pain or that disc herniation is pain moving away from the center of the spine, which is called peripheralization. It moves towards the periphery. Or centralization, which is pain moving towards the middle of the spine. That's called centralization. Now, centralization is what we're looking for. If you are having pain down the leg due to a herniated disc or a strained lumbar ligament, we want to do movements, activities, and positions that actually help the disc reabsorb and that pain to centralize. Centralization is an indicator of healing. 
it tells us that that gel-like center and the annulus, those ring of ligaments, is becoming happier again. It's healing. Things are becoming more centered. What's the solution? What am I supposed to do with this? Well, you pretty much have four options. The first option, you can rehab this with carefully designed movements to help that disc reabsorb so that your pain centralizes. That's the first option. The second option is you can do rehab and take some medications to help that inflammatory process. The third option is you can do rehab and get an injection, which again will further help that inflammatory process and decrease the irritation that is occurring in that spinal canal. The fourth option is you could do rehab and if that's not helping your pain, stiffness, weakness, you can get a surgery and then do rehab again. So the surgery is actually pretty rare. It's very likely that the disc does reabsorb. It's a very small percentage of people that they really, their sequestered disc is just not healing. You see where I'm going with this? There's a common pattern. We need to rehab. No matter what other treatment approach you're doing, rehab is gonna be a vital, a vital part of this. The question that everyone wants answered, when will I get better? Here's a better question. If I rehab properly, when should I start seeing positive change? The answer to that is, it actually may surprise you. If your disc is reabsorbing and you're doing the proper positions, activities, and movements to help influence that, you should see positive change within two to four weeks. Your symptoms should be decreasing and your movement or your mechanics should be improving. Now, two to four weeks is a ballpark and it really depends on a lot of factors, including just your overall health. If you're on the right trajectory and things are going well, I would encourage you to keep going. It's not uncommon that people take two to three months or longer to get better and to heal. What's most important is the trajectory that you're on, that your pain, your stiffness, your weakness, all of that is moving in the right direction. It is super important to, number one, stay positive. Number two, to learn how to manage this on your own. And then number three, make sure that you're being held accountable to work on these things, especially during that healing period. Rehab is not just a two to three times a week. You need to learn how to manage this on your own daily. People will ask me, how do I prevent this from happening again? Unfortunately, there are no shortcuts. You need movement and exercise. Here's the analogy that I typically will use. Antibiotics are used to treat and prevent bacterial infections. It's not a life sentence. You're just doing it for a short time. Much like rehab. You're not rehabbing for life. You're doing it for a short time to solve a problem. Now, we ingest food and water because we need nutrients for our health, and that is a life sentence. You need to do that every day. The food and water, or the nutrients, is much like movement and exercise. That is a life sentence. You have to do this every day to keep up with your health and to make sure that your spine stays healthy. When it comes to movement and exercise, here's a pro tip. So simple. Make it fun. I promise you that if you don't like it, you're gonna stop doing it. So do what you like to do. Personally, I'm not gonna go do yoga. I don't like yoga. But what I will do is something like go play sports or go do martial arts. Those are good ideas. Maybe you like Tai Chi or Pilates or things like that. Make it fun and you will do it for a long time. The most important thing that I leave you with, the number one thing, is you need a movement exam. I cannot tell you how many people that I see every day who have pain, stiffness, weakness down their leg, their back hurts, and no one is looking at them. If you're working with a healthcare practitioner that hasn't done a thorough movement exam to explore the deficits you have and the mobility in your spine, 
then you need to find another one. Point blank. I know it sounds harsh. Make sure you get a movement exam. I want to save you time, money, and frustration. Before you go get that injection, before you get that surgery, get a movement exam. Remember, these things heal. You just need to be doing the right positions, activities, and movements to influence the body's amazing natural ability to heal. My name is Dr. Chris, and I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please like, comment, subscribe, or follow, because I'm here to help you. Always remember that there is a solution to your problem. If you have yet to find one, you can call, text, or email me. I would love to help you out.